everyone, and welcome to Kitchen Party. Now, if you are new to Kitchen Party, Kitchen Party is a great show because we bring the coolest people in food who know a lot of stuff, who know how to make your recipes amazing, who want to talk about food and love food just as much as you do, and you get to talk to them live through Facebook Live. Now, if you used to watch our show, we were on Google Plus, and now we've moved, we're trying Facebook Live for the first time, so we're really excited about that. So please, if you're enjoying the show uh, throughout the day, uh, make sure you click like, make sure you click share, share with all your friends and family. Um, if you're watching on Hoosa, uh, which is where we're broadcasting from, there is a button to click to share on Twitter and click to share on Facebook as well. So definitely check those things out. Um, my name is Babette Pepe. I am the founder of Bakespace.com and Kitchen Party. We're a little bit late starting today because we had a little bit of technical problems, but we're good now. So I want to thank you guys for joining us as well. If you're watching a replay, welcome. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Even if the show isn't air by the time your comment is gone, we'll make sure we'll check it out. We'll answer the question for you. Um, I want to introduce also my co-host, uh, Danielle from Peaceful Cooking. Now, Danielle, do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, I just do a food journal, peacefulcooking.blogspot.com, and it's a hobby, and I love it, and just sharing my food and recipes and new stories, hopefully, <laughs> they're for me. And make sure you talk a little bit louder, too, because okay. I think you may be a little bit low. Um, you know who's in the Sorry, chat room, no. by the way? Monica Chase from Alaska. Oh, Monica Akmani. <laughs> yes, Monica has been a Bake Space member for, I want to say, since like 2007. It is ridiculously long. Um, Eric is our guest today. Now, Eric, do I say your last name? Gustafsson? Gustafsson. Gustafson. Ah, oh, I was so close. I was Sorry. practicing today. I was like, come on, come on, come on. Now, you are the founder of Coast Packing Company. Now, what is that and what kind of products do you make? Just so that we know, because I was telling everyone when I said, hey, come watch our live show. I was like, here's a man who knows everything about natural fats, how to make pie crust amazing, how to make cookies even taste better. But I didn't really explain to people like what you do. So can you like, Bring us back a little bit before we start to dive in. Sure. Well, I won't take the credit you gave me for being the founder. Thank you. My, oh, great, well, gra my great grandfather was the founder of the company in 1920, 22. So uh, we're getting ready to celebrate our 95th anniversary at the end of uh, this coming January in a month. Well, how are you guys celebrating? Good question. We haven't we haven't really made a decision yet. We have all year, I think, to celebrate. So we'll we'll figure something out. We really have our eyes set on a hundred anniversary, and uh, we've put together what we call our appreciation committee for our employees. And I'm sure I'll be tasking them with celebration ideas and plans for our hundredth anniversary. So that's a few years from now. So let's see. We'll have to get this. We'll have to get this band back together, and we'll find out what you're doing. Maybe you can invite us because you're in Los Angeles, and Danielle is actually from LA too. I was going to say I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty big party. There's going to be a lot of people eating and drinking and having a good time. <laughs> well, that sounds awesome. Now, Danielle, um, what is your home cook experience with like natural fats? Are you pro are you a fan do you have any experience with baking I, I, do, I do have experience i baked with lard um i love using bacon fat when i'm cooking my soul food you know some of the stuff stuff and um duck fat is a favorite of mine it's a little stronger so it kind of takes over so you have to i don't know how to monitor how much duck fat to use and i don't do you consider butter an animal fat I would say it fits within that now, but I think so. Oh, I do that every day. <laughs> Eric, what's yeah. your most popular product? Lard, believe it or not, pork lard. And Viva Lard is our number one selling brand uh, of lard. Like how much, how, when you say number one selling, like what does that mean in terms of like amount? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we, we don't like, a, like a stadium full of lard volume that we sell, but it's uh, it's, a, it's a considerable amount. Especially this time of year, because they're used for tamales. Like, yeah, so this is our busiest time of the year with uh, all the baking going on for 
traditional baking, pie crusts, and then obviously all the tamales that are being cooked right now for Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. So we certainly are very, very busy. Let me are you, can I ask you a question. Most of the time when I'm baking, you know, making a pie crust, I would use um, uh, shortening. Like Crisco? Um, yeah. So what would be the benefit? Like how is lard better than that? Well, lard is the traditional pie crust shortening and even variations of blending lard and tallow together creates a, a, a really flaky and flavorful crust. Uh, the benefits are you get a better flaky crust, a better flavor profile, and of course you get the benefits of natural fats and not having your uh, potential artificial trans fats that exist in some of those vegetable-based shortenings. Yeah, I was wondering if, you know, what part of the plant is fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Monica Chase said lard is a requirement of my grandma's pepper nut Pepper nut, what is that? Pepper nut recipe, have some in my oven right now. Nice. You, you know, I was talking to Renee, we were doing some, um, we were talking online yesterday and we were talking about the show. And for those of you who watch Kitchen Party, Renee Lynch was not able to join us tonight because we've had some little bit of technical problems. Um, but you know, it happens with live, with live streaming stuff. You just never know when your computer is gonna be like, nope, you're not, this isn't gonna happen. Um, but for those of you, Renee is still with the show, Renee Lynch, um, and she and I were starting to talk about, we were talking about fats and natural fats versus like synthetic or what? what's the opposite of like what you do? What is the thing that's most common that other people use? And palm why is oil, it bad? Palm Pardon? oil or your man-made, uh, you know, hydrogenated vegetable fats or soybean oil, canola oil, uh, stuff like that. Coconut oil as well. Yeah, I like coconut oil. I feel like that's like a different beast. And I don't, am I lying to myself? No, coconut oil is, is more than acceptable as, as a, uh, you know, plant-based, uh, fruit-based uh, oil. I mean, co essentially coconut and palm are kind of considered part of the Loric family. So a lot of people like them and we sell a decent amount of coconut oil as well. We make a couple specialty uh, shortening items uh, with coconut, uh, and we also sell it to soap manufacturers and uh, chemical manufacturers. What should we stay away from? Like, what, what's what's the misnomer out there? Like, what is if I'm going to go and I'm going to make pie crust and looking at like a generic recipe that's online? What's like the one thing that you consistently see that you wish like people would be like, oh my God, this is so bad for you or they don't realize. Because every time I hear trans fat, trans fat, and I'm like, I don't even know what that is actually. <laughs> um, I mean, I kind of know, but I'm like, you know, can you maybe can you, you enlighten me a little bit on that? Because I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm talking to the right person who's going to tell me the truth. Sure. So trans fats is a byproduct of hydrogenation uh, for vegetable oils. To, to create a vegetable fat from soybean oil or canola oil or blends of that, you have to use hydrogenation in the process to convert the oil into a solid fat shortening. And through hydrogenation is where you introduce the artificial trans fats that are the culprit now once believed to be healthier for you and now we found out with more research and science that the artificial trans fats are worse for you is that like do they cause like blockage in the heart i mean is that the correct okay it, it, it's it's a double negative it it raises your bad cholesterol and lowers your good cholesterol oh so it's like the it's like the meeting of everything bad. <laughs> you, know, you absolutely don't. The, the misnomer was because it was cholesterol free. Yeah. Uh, you know, vegetable oils, vegetable fats. They thought that it was better, but it turned out to be otherwise. It only took us about 25, 30 years to figure it out though. Yeah, look at us as a nation now, as far as the other kind of fat. 
Well, no. and, and that's what and that's what animal fats were demonized for so long. And yeah. you know, you look at other parts of the world and and other, other countries that still embrace animal fats, and you don't see the similar issues with uh, obesity and heart disease. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and it's not to say that everything in moderation, right? Yes. <laughs> why, why do you think that, um, why do you think that the natural fat makes the food taste better? Like, can you give me any examples of, um, like, what does it do for cookies? Because I know a lot of people are going to start baking for the holidays. In fact, I just went to a, an LA food bloggers cookie swap and they were so delicious, um, mm -hmm. all the different types of cookies. But, you know, can you give me any kind of insight into, um, why why it makes it taste better is it that the it's flavorful like you can actually taste the flavor or is it just the way that it mixes with the other ingredients uh, all of those the the flavor profile how it integrates into the dough uh, the finished product that it yields uh, just even the how you put it the kind of that you get that texture on your tongue that that flavor profile where it's not filmy with vegetable fats it will be animal fats you don't get that aftertaste typically uh, we've seen it with donuts and other cookies where we've uh, tested our product against some of the vegetable fats and you can tell it's a cleaner flavor kind of like, mm. dips in, like margin and butter when you taste the difference hey because monica the the thing, but they don't oh Interesting. Hey, Monica Chase, let me know if you want to come into the video too, because you there's a couple. You said that it you she's been asking a couple questions and that they're not popping up in the in the message. So if you want to come into the chat, I'm going to send you a broadcast invite if you want. You can, if you want to accept it, all you have to do is click the button that says join the chat. Um, let's see if she if she if she joins us. Um, but I, she did say lard is pork and pork equals flavor. I, I guess that's, that's an easy Michael actually <laughs> looks like yeah it's Michael oh Michael said that oh I'm sorry that's you know that's why I got confused because oh, oh Monica doesn't want to broadcast oh boo um, she said she doesn't have any headphones or she would oh okay see because I was th reading Michael's and thinking it was Monica's um, but that's what Michael said you're right that's what Michael said if you guys have any question and you're chatting on Facebook um, you can leave a comment and we will uh, Melody is going to send it to us and so we'll be able to see it or if you're watching on Hoosa, um, you can also see it as well. Now Danielle, when you are cooking and baking, um, have you experimented with like using animal fats to enrich a flavor of something? Oh, yeah. Cause, like bacon, <laughs> I would think bacon fat you'd probably be able to a use lot. that. Yeah, I use bacon fat the most. Um, I remember one day I, I was making quinoa and I said, like, oh, I want to be all healthy. And then I sauteed some green beans, mushrooms, and bacon fat. And then it's like, okay, well, let me just, you know, brown the quinoa and some bacon. And I just like totally undid the healthiness in my mind <laughs> with the quinoa, and it tasted amazing. <laughs> I just mixed it all together. So, but I do a lot like um, when I'm doing like fried okra and um, fried zucchini, you know, the yellow squash. Um, I don't know. <laughs> those, those all sound good. That makes me oh, want yeah. quinoa, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we should get you that recipe. <laughs> Maybe you can put it on the website. That'd be kind of right. How to fatten up your quinoa? That, that might make, push me over the edge to actually eat. <laughs> actually, if you add it to kale, if you add bacon uh -oh. fat to kale, that yeah, might. Some people may be like, oh, kale actually tastes good. Now, Eric, are you noticing um, a trend, like a change in, in consumers' taste of what they're buying? Like, are they, are people going more towards lard for a certain reason? Or what are you seeing in terms of, like, what people are actually, restaurants are buying or what, what people are starting to eat? Are you noticing a, a change? We, we certainly are. We, we see... Millennials more accepting of animal fats. Uh, we see restaurants touting it on their menus, whether it's lard or beef tallow. And in fact, beef fats really making a, a big comeback for deep frying. Uh, I just had dinner last night at the Arthur J in Manhattan Beach. It's 
It's one of my favorite restaurants. They also happen to be a customer of ours. And they have beef fat french fries on their menu. Oh. That's how they, that's how they have it listed. Because you and, need something, another reason to want french fries. <laughs> well, it, it really makes the best french fries. I mean, yeah. certainly some can argue that duck fat is also popular, you know, for the high-end restaurants. But beef fat gets equal or better results for a fraction of the price compared to duck fat. It's more readily available. And to me, I think the flavor profile is, is superior. You just, you just get that little extra flavor out of the beef fat when you fry french fries or chicken. Uh, even the little shallots that they were putting on the cream spinach uh, that's a little breaded was fried in the beef towel last last mm -hmm. night that threw back on the cream spinach that sounds yeah. that yeah. sounds very interesting and super delicious i'm surprised that um that millennials it seems funny because it seems like millennials are like the it's like they're the new taste of the world like if they like something it seems like it's super cool um, why do you think that is that they're open to that is it I think it really fits with the minimally processed movement people yeah. wanting to know more about what's in their food if they can pronounce what's on the label then more than likely it's acceptable for you and the ingredients are minimally processed and you know in conjunction with that uh, and flavor is a huge part of what uh, millennials are looking for. Mm -hmm. and, and price is second. So flavor trumps price for the millennials, hmm. which I found very interesting. You know, we're, we do these different research studies to try to learn more about our different target markets. And when we did the first study that, that told us that millennials are more accepting, and have also, since we did the first one a year ago, They've also increased their consumption of animal fats. I originally thought it would be folks in my parents' generation, baby boomers, because they grew up eating lard, and even yeah. folks in my grandparents' generation. But they actually had the least amount of acceptance and consumption. It's a complete reverse of what I was anticipating. So it's very insightful. Huh. That's it, isn't really. Well, I wonder why that's so weird why that is. You know, I was at a pizza place one time and I was talking to the guy who was working behind the counter and he's like in the millennial um, age. And I said, Hey, you must eat pizza here all the time. And he's like, No, I never eat it. And I was like, What? And he goes, I don't eat pizza. And he's like, I, I'd rather have like such and such or whatever. And it just seems so foreign to me because I was like you can make any pizza you want like it's gonna be delicious and I'm like why would you? it's free are you crazy and he's like no this is a common it's it's not unique it's not something you know that I want to put in my body I'm like who is this kid so I definitely think Millennials have a of a difference I think they're 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 in the on-demand generation where everything is like I need That's to get somewhere true. someone will pick that me up so true. yeah <laughs> well your daughter's probably like that too Oh, yeah. You know what? Let me. Well, yeah, they're very picky about what they eat and um, very mindful of how they eat and even when they eat. <laughs> so, even when they eat. You mean like yeah. I, should, I can't eat after 6 p.m., that kind of stuff? Yeah, 7 o'clock or whatever. It's like, oh, shoot, I got to, you know, you want to go out to dinner? No, we won't eat by 7. Oh, God. Okay, never mind. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, that's usually when she's doing a cleanse or something like that. You know, she, she has these different phases that she goes through every couple months but um, of course she won't eat any meat except for fish so she won't be you know taking advantage of um, any of the bacon fat that I'm cooking with <laughs> wow Eric when you guys are, are like testing your products and stuff like that how do you guys um, is it like your your recipes or your process it has been the same since launching the company or have you how do you guys test to see like lard how does that how does that go through the process? Because I know nothing about lard. All I know is I see it in a container and I'm like, lard, what the heck is this? <laughs> you know, and I, I'm like, everyone's like, it's delicious to bake with, it's delicious to cook with. And I'm like, I have no idea about the process. Not necessarily the process of how you make it, but how how is this process? You test it. You gotta test yeah. it. a recipe. You can't just hand them a spoonful of lard. <laughs> yeah, do you guys have a, a like a test? Or do test you? Kitchen? We, we, we have a lab 
which is our houses our quality assurance department and we use uh, analytics there's certain metrics you can apply to monitor what we call free fatty acid and peroxide value and those are those are two metrics that will tell you if the lard has uh, the correct quality and one of the things with animal fats is it has the propensity to get oxidized, especially if you're frying. When you heat it up, cool it down, heat it up, that oxidizes the oil. And that does it for any any oil, really, which will eventually uh, you know, diminish the quality. And at some point, you'll have to change it. But we have, we've gotten more sophisticated and had to over the years about our testing and analytics to ensure that we're producing the highest quality products. That applies to everything we manufacture. We have a question from Renee. She says, are there any rules for experimenting with, I think it says, Substitution. substitutions. Yeah, there's a there's a little icon over the last word, but I'm pretty sure it's substitutions. It does. <laughs> in, in, in what context, uh, in terms of substitutions between lard and tallow or vegetable oh, oils and animal fats? No. Like your oh, question, in, in Renee. baking or in cooking? What's the best thing for, for cookies? Lard? I would or say butter, then maybe a mixture of lard and, and beef tallow. Beef tallow? Mm -hmm. Does that beef flavor come through in the chocolate chips though? That's what I would think. If uh, you naturally refine the product, we have what's called physical refining in our, in our plant, mm -hmm. and that uses steam injection and high temperature to strip flavor and odor so we can make it with flavor or with or without flavor okay what is it your biggest okay um olive oil is used a lot more than like i would think or people who are you know conscientious of how they're cooking use it more than vegetable oil is that like your biggest um, do you call it competitor or no, I, I don't think anything really is a big competitor to us. I think people make their choices based on the type of cooking or baking they're gonna do and what flavor profile they, they want. I mean, olive oil is a great product that's certainly acceptable for light sauteing. I would never use it for a right. heavy duty fry. And right. certainly it's difficult to use for baking. Uh, you know, you need the consistency of a fat that will integrate well into doughs and you know, provide the creaming properties necessary for baked goods. So you really can't achieve that with vegetable oils. Right, that's you, true. You tend to have to use like an emulsifier or, or some sort of monodiglyceride to, uh, to allow that to, to happen when you bake, especially like a, making breads. Yeah, now, I've used olive oil on breads, but um, okay. You know, Renee says, she says, um, when she wanted some, so the question originally was, are there any rules for experimenting with substitution? And then she clarified that and she says, like only use lard in baked slash dessert goods and beef tallow in savory items. Now, you just said beef tallow in cookies. So maybe that's, you almost already answered that question, but any other, are there any other rules? Have fun, experiment. Yeah. You know, you can you can play with the different fats to create savory flavor profiles or or none. Uh, for years, we sold the shortening that made the cream filling for Twinkies and Ding Dongs and, and all of the Hostess cake items, and that basically was beef fat fully deodorized. You could wow. dip your finger in it, and it would be tasteless, like most vegetable fats. And that's the refining process that we have. So it's. Uh, it's it wasn't vegan. <laughs> right. Well. <laughs> not vegan. <laughs> you know, they, they they never claimed to be. I don't think. Well, I, I'm sure you know, that wasn't even that says, word back then. <laughs> you know, vegan or or friendly or vegetarian friendly Twinkie, but maybe they'll make them someday. <laughs> demand. I have to conf I have to make a confession. Mm -hmm. I loved Twinkies so much as a little girl that my uncle Michael called me Twinkie. 
<laughs> and now I am like to, to think it was like with meat. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? Um, you know, I wanted to find out if Michael wanted to join us in the chat room uh, because he's 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 he's, got a lot of questions. he's engaging with a few questions. But I wanted to see if he wanted to join us. So I'm going to send you, Michael. I'm going to send you an invite, and you can choose to accept it or or deny it. And I will understand if you deny it. But I figure you can. You know, we'll we'll see what happens. Well, I, um, I, I see Michael's question, and I yes. can answer it if you like. Yes. Oh, he declined broadcast. Uh. Oh, <laughs> you guys are such chickens. <laughs> Go ahead. So the question is, what do we look for in a tallow or lard to get pr something that is at least yeah. processed and most healthy? Well, lard in in general is minimally processed, and so is beef tallow. But, one of the things that you definitely want to look for is that it's non-hydrogenated. Uh, so in some cases, in certain parts of the country, you see hydrogenated lard and tallow. And that's been done to create a little firmer products and higher melting points. But typically, it's not necessarily needed if you uh, do the right formulations. And we've seen it happen for making certain pie crusts, depending how firm and brittle and flaky you want it. And one of the tricks that we do is take lard and beef tallow and blend it together. And that almost makes the perfect pie crust short. And we used to do that for Pillsbury when they had a manufacturing facility here on the West Coast. We were their preferred supplier to make all of their uh, uh, animal fat shortenings for their pie crust. Wow. So as a consumer, where would I go to buy your beef tallow? You could go to Restaurant Depot and Jetro uh, okay. or Costco as well, Costco Business Centers. They carry our Flavor King brand shortening. Okay. And there's Flavor mm -hmm. King Blue, which is 100% beef tallow. And there is Flavor King Red, which is beef tallow with about 1% or less of soybean or cottonseed oil. And that was done that way because it, people felt 30, 40 years ago when we started making these products like this, that it has a little vegetable oil in it, so it must be better than just the straight beef tallow. It's such a misperception, but sometimes uh, reality becomes perception in that way. Okay. You know, we do have some things on Facebook. I was just noticing some people talk. Um, Judy Lines. Um, Judy, how do you say your last name? Is it Lines? Lines? Yes. Oh, she's. I just saw her at the cookie swap. She's adorable. Um, she said, and her her sense of humor is so right on. She makes me laugh every time she, something comes out of her mouth because I'm always like, she is sharp <laughs> as a whistle. Um, she said, I found that if you need a vegan alternative for pie dough, if you freeze olive oil it works really well have you ever heard that freezing that's olive oil idea. i have not hmm that's interesting and then jeff who used to be a kitchen party co-host who's not jeff here anymore who was the tampa tribune food editor um and the tampa tribune i think is um i think it's no more i think it I don't know if it still exists, the Tampa Tribune. I think they were acquired. He said, mix your fats, and he called it Franken fats. And then he says, can I get duck fat in an IV? <laughs> <laughs> if you knew oh, Jeff, you would, you'd oh, laugh because he's like, he's so classic. And then it says, mmm, duck fat. So I want to thank them for, for <laughs> tuning in. Um, Is that it's a Palmer so, impression? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so nice to see them. Um, and then I was trying to go on to the other pages and see if I can see if anyone left any comments on that too. But um, it's 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 hilarious how um, people, for some reason, when you say fat or when you say like duck fat, people are like, mmm, duck fat. Let's see if we have any on Tech Munch. Not, oh, Melissa Taylor is also tuning in on, on, on our Tech Munch page as well. Um, now, we have about, we've been going, we have about, 15, 20 more minutes left for the show, just so you guys know. Maybe we can give some folks some advice because the holiday baking is coming. They're going to be baking cookies. Let's start with cookies first. They're going, they look at a recipe and it has butter and it has some, 
uh, you know, some other stuff in it, um, the ingredients, the chocolate chips, the whatever it is that is going to be their recipe. Um, what's like an animal fat that they can add that maybe adds a little bit of oomph to it where people are like, what's that secret ingredient? It's so delicious. Um, or is there something, an animal fat that will give it, give the cookie some extra, like, will it make it chewier? Will it make it um, more together? What, what is the thing that will, will the animal fat will do for the cookie? And which animal fat do you recommend? Uh, I like lard personally for cookies and a little beef tallow too, but lard and or beef towel will give it that a little extra flavor, a little savory flavor too with that sweetness, depending what else you have in the cookie, if it's chocolate chips or peanut butter. I'm a big peanut butter chocolate chip cookie fan, personally. Mm. My Aunt Pat has the best chocolate chip cookie recipe. It's so delicious. I don't know how she gets them to be literally like this thick. And I'm like, how, how, is, how do they not fall? And I, sometimes I like cookies that are a little bit undercooked too, where they almost feel like they're greasy and delicious. Um, <laughs> Michael says lard and butter together work very well in chocolate chip cookies. Mm. So I he's, believe that. He definitely tested that. Now pie crust, I was reading and it said that um, certain fats make pie crust even flakier. What advice do you have in terms of like the pie bakers out there, if they're thinking about dabbling in natural fats or they want to replace something that maybe is in an existing recipe and why would they want to do that? Is it going to make it flakier? Is it going to make it stick together? What is it going to do? All, all the above. Lard would be the first choice and you can also do a lard tallow blend uh, as well. But uh, well, lard's of, what, typically the most popular choice. When you, when you say a blend, are you talking like mostly lard, mostly talent i mean like what's the combination if someone wants to try it everyone kind of plays with different formulations i'd have to reach back and think about it but i think you know you could start at about 50 50 and and see how that works you know the the idea is to raise some of the melting point of the lard which will allow it to kind of integrate easier as you're layering your dough and making your doughs for your pie crust. And, and it will help with the flakiness and will definitely help with the flavor. Can you mess up animal fats? Like, can you burn it or ruin it or, or take out any of the health properties from it? Because that's what I would do. I would ruin it. Whatever it is, <laughs> I'd, I'd like put it in the oven and be like, hmm. Did I do that wrong, or what's the? They're Brazilian at high temperatures. I mean, you're gonna, you're not gonna find many fats that are as resilient as lard and tallow uh, at high temperatures. So, you know, it has our product has a smoke point of 450 degrees Fahrenheit before it starts to really truly smoke. So oh. you'd really have to be cooking some with some horsepower in your kitchen there to uh, to have that happen, and and that's a deep frying temperatures. Yeah, baking, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't have those problems necessarily. Is there, is there a shelf life? Yeah, typically you can get nine months uh, with uh, with lard or tallow. And you know, as long as the temperature, storage temperatures are stable, you could get longer than that. So do you recommend like storing in the refrigerator? You can refrigerator or in, just on your countertop. The key is consistency. It's almost like wine. I use that analogy a lot. You know, people say, oh, store your red wine at 58 degrees. Well, if you store it at 60 or 62 and keep it that consistently, it'll be fine. It's just a matter of keeping that temperature consist consistent. Okay. What happens if you don't keep that consistent? Like for the, for the fat, like if it's on your counter and you're living in Michigan, I'm not going to mention anyone who we know who's living in Michigan <laughs> right now. Melody is like freezing her butt off. But if she has something on her counter and it goes from like 60 or 70 to like 19 degrees, um, what does she need to be prepared for? Well, you could eventually, it could potentially what we call go rancid. It can, has an off flavor, but you're going to have to have that happen consistently almost every day that rapid fluctuation oh. in storage conditions you know if it if it does that and it's 
goes from 70 to 19 and stays there, it's not going to be that big of an issue. And chances are you're going to use it fast enough to bore it even becomes an issue. Uh, Danielle, how, how much um, like lard and stuff do you think you go through like a year? Well, I haven't used lard in a long time. Not yet. Not yeah, yet. But I, want to try, <laughs> I'm, I want to try tallow. Yeah, um, I think you're, you're going to have to come and show us what you what you make too. Right. <laughs> we'll see if it turns out. Um, you know, I don't know because it's kind of it's kind of random as far as the bacon fat. Um, I have some duck fat in my freezer right now, um, just because I want to. I didn't realize you could freeze that stuff. Well, I just didn't know. I didn't know if. Um, because when I baked the deck and I got the fat, I just want to make sure it doesn't something doesn't go bad in my refrigerator if, you know, if I didn't render it properly. So and I've only used the duck fat a couple times when kind of savoring it. I have a little tub about this much, you know. Um, but the bacon fat will just be kind of random, you know, when I'm cooking bacon and I'll save some of the fat maybe and use it for my egg or, you know, if I'm planning on doing some heavy duty um, southern cooking. Then I'll use like all the fat from you know. It's, I always say a pound of bacon, but it's only twelve ounce package. But well, it. if you like spinach and sautéing it, I, I love to. I use beef tallow instead of olive oil when really? I cook it. Oh. And it even can give it just a little crispness to the spinach. It almost turns into like a little bit of a light chip. Okay, yeah, that it's a little crunchiness to it, and the flavor is awesome. Yeah, well, if I can find the tallow, I'm going to try that. For sure. All right, now, now I don't have to send you for Christmas. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I was going to ask you, you know, the, the Healthy Fats Coalition, I know we kind of, like, talked about that um, before we did this show. What is that? Because that seems like... That seems like an interesting because it doesn't see healthy fats. I am totally confused at why that <laughs> why that works. But I like that because then I'm like, oh, I'm a little bit heavy, so I'm like, hmm, I'm healthy. I'm you know like, what's going on? So can you tell me about that coalition and what and what is the the purpose of the coalition to reeducate people? Because I feel like that's what we're kind of doing here. I'm learning about you know, instead of me looking at a thing of lard and being like, oh my God, lard, like, don't put that in my food. Oh, oh. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm kind of like, oh, I kind of want my spinach to be crispy. And I kind of, you know, and it, if it's healthier and these millennials, they must know something. They're so smart. Um, well, do you that farm to table little? thing. Yeah, yeah. farm to table, exactly. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Are you a part of that or what's the, what's the story there? We are, we help to organize it. And it's ultimately trying to get like-minded people together and playing off the old adage, there's strength in numbers. And you know, the more you get together and get collective voice pulling in the same direction, you can educate and advocate much easier. And that's really the whole purpose of the Healthy Full Cats Coalition. I mean, we want to educate people and spread the word. And we don't want to be the only one talking about it. I mean, it's, Certainly, it's not just us. We've seen others really taking the lead on this. And so we thought, why not jump in and see what we could do to help organize a coalition and communicate the message that animal fats are great for you and enjoy the flavor, enjoy your food, and don't feel so guilty about it anymore. Animal fats are not as bad as was we were told 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, cigarettes were good 20 or 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My mother-in-law says that when she was pregnant with, like, my husband, she's, like, smoking. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Um, our brains need fat. We need to Correct. consume some fat, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we joke. Animal fats have only been around for probably 10,000 years. So, <laughs> you know, we've evolved quite a bit as, uh, as a human race. Animal fat can be that bad for you. You know, Michael. Michael says, um, "Don't uh, don't you think that we've um, had a lot of lies foisted on us? Like, because um, I'm I feel like I I feel like I know enough about the food space and the food industry that even for me to be like, hmm, it's like I've been conditioned to think that it's not good for me." Well, certainly, there's been some deception from other industries. 
and you know you, you always want to be careful how you pick on people and you know you don't want to throw stones in the glass house if you live in one per se but you know you had the sugar industry they were uncovered by the uh, journal uh, of the american medicine association and it looks like they paid harvard scientists and researchers to take the uh you know, focus away from sugar and attack animal fats and saturated fats, the culprit. Do you guys remember when snack well snacks, like those little like oh, yeah. cookies? You know, the healthy thing? I ate so many of those in my lifetime. <laughs> I ate probably too many. But uh, just because I was like, oh, sugar free. It's fat free. Melody, uh, welcome, Melody, to hi, the, Melody. the room. Thank Hello, you. Hello, Melody. I have a question, and it's very. This is a very important question. With the onset of Alzheimer dementia and sundowners, so many people are getting this because they're not eating animal fat, and because they're not getting the protein and to go to their brain. And people say that it's really not the cholesterol from the animal fat that causes heart disease; that it's the carbohydrates. If people start adding animal fat in back into their system when they're cooking, and we know it's going to taste a lot better, but is it going to be more healthier? For, uh, for individuals, especially that are approaching, let's say my age, that might end up with Alzheimer's sundowners or Sundance? You raise a great question. And certainly there's been discussion and studies that center around the, the vegetable fats and vegetable oils helping to be a culprit to that. And you know, certainly I'm not a medical profession, so I can't speak to it completely. But if you look at things from a historical perspective, I think we've had less heart disease and less of these types of diseases and ailments going back to grandparents and you know generations that used more natural fats, more animal fats. And so, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to cure it, but there's certainly some credence to that, that possibly using more natural fats and animal fats is better for you, better for your brain development. Yeah, my mother used to make Italian cookies, and they always had lard in them, and they melted in your mouth. And her biscuits were the most amazing biscuits that oh, I've yeah. ever eaten in my entire life. And I've never tasted biscuits like that. But she would use lard, you know, and she was taught by my Sicilian grandmother on how to make all this wonderful food. And, you know, Italians have beautiful skin. I mean, yeah, look yeah. at us. Look at us. <laughs> so, I was going to say, Monica has some, uh, some statements. She says, about her husband, which is really cute. Um, it took a long time to break my hubby of margarine. Hmm. I love that. Like, I used to take my niece to a grocery store, and she was like three years old, and he would be like, "What's that?" And she's like, "I can't believe it's not butter." <laughs> it's just like I love that stuff. It's so delicious. Even the vegan stuff is is pretty good. But it says, "Took my uh, it took a long time to break my husband of margarine. He grew up with it and was always told it was there for him. Interesting. Took a long time to also break him of um, Teflon too. So <laughs> I think I think how we're raised, how our families, um, yeah. you know, or will watch the television. You know, I remember as a child eating like cereal nonstop. Um, so I guess. Maybe the, the conversations like this that we're having, where we're not really afraid to be like, what is this? And how is this better for us? And um, what can we do to, you know, if these millennials are doing it, right? Yeah. No? Right. <laughs> you guys are like, uh, you know, so we probably, mar margarine is a distributing product. Uh, and there's different ways to make uh, margarine using different fats. Uh, so, but it's mainly water and salt. Oh, salt. Oh, I do not get along with salt at all. But they're it's finding like out that salt is bad for you also, which is a pretty surprising. But Sandra uh, on Facebook, Sandra uh, Hosenshell said, Eric, where might I go to learn more about your claim that animal fats are healthy for you? You could go to our website. We have a lot of information on our website and, you know, and in certain parts of our website, there's a whole section, you know, basically dedicated to explaining more about animal fats, uncovering the truth, and also talking about what stuff you should avoid. And so 
that's a great resource. We built the website to be more of a resource and to communicate these uh, these different messages. And the Healthy Is Fats it? Coalition will also start uh, to be a, a vehicle to communicate that as well. And so just so we know the URLs, it's um, coastpackingco.com? Actually, coastpacking.com. Oh, coastpacking.com. Correct. And then the Healthy um, Fats Coalition is healthyfatscoalition.org. Correct. So we have, and then also, um, you guys took the lead in the um, the health guide, the ancestral health guide. What what's that? Is that um, is that is that a thing for your to know what you, where you've come from, like where your history is, or what's the? Um, well, I think we just. Uh, Found found that information and have you know been using that information. We didn't take the lead that I'm aware of. Oh, to okay, help I see. Create it, but uh, but he did, and I think his, his whole message is kind of going back to you know the more natural, minimally processed foods. Eat like our ancestors did, and you know have food that's minimally processed, essentially. Maybe that's like why paleo does so well. Yeah, paleo is uh, uh, very popular and big proponent of uh, beef, beef fat, beef tallow, and, and even lard. And they'll tend to focus more on the grass fed versus grain fed. Oh, you know, it's interesting. I um, I was at a wedding recently, and um, they, uh, they, the people who were there were from like North Dakota. And all of them were like, I don't know if it's because they're corn fed or something happened. They were all tall and like um, beautiful and just really uh, like you, there were, there was something distinctive about them. And a woman I talked to, she said, yeah, uh, or maybe it was from Minnesota. Maybe they were there from Minnesota. And she's like, everyone from this area is like corn fed and they look like they are like miniature gods you know and i'm like their diet totally changes like their entire body like they're you know and they can handle cold and stuff like that um monica also said uh, i was raised in a farm country and i think she says because a little icon is covering over it i think he, her husband was raised in the bay area possibly that's what it says yes um, it says. she says yes it is okay cool so that it is kind of interesting i was born in michigan and then moved out to california and and i remember when i i couldn't even drink caramel colored sodas my parents were like, no, 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 no you're not going to do it. But they'd give me seven up. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. It's like almost the same thing. It's just the coloring is different. Um, so For I think, me, my, what? My family, did, like, when I was a kid, I wasn't allowed to drink soda, but I could drink like seven up. But, but that was because of the caffeine factor. They say, you know, the dark sodas have caffeine and the clear sodas don't. So oh, that maybe good. that's what it is. Because I was thinking it was the sugar content. No, that's the same in all of them. Cause, oh, because they're probably <laughs> like Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew, <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah, Mountain. That's one. That's one that I do like. Mountain Dew. Yeah. It's funny as, well, as I've gotten older, I used to drink sodas in high school. I rarely drink them. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I just got away from it, and even in college, I could probably count on one hand how many times a year if I even have a Coke or. Dr. Pepper, it's not something I crave very often, but it'll happen on occasion. My husband cannot stop Coke. He, that's his like thing. He is, it's like, I think when he hears the can open, it, it, oh. it, 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 rem, it reminds him of something, like something great in his <laughs> life. And he'll, he'll open it and he'll be like, ah, it's so good. And then I'll just be like, I need a, I need, I just need a sip of that. It's like two drug addicts. I'm like, give me, give me a sip, give me a hit, give me a hit. And I'm like, that's the worst thing we do. And then, you know, I can do it. I can do Coke and I can go to bed at night. If I do a diet Coke, I will be up for like 10 more hours. It is, there's something different in those two, those two well, things. Your, your husband's reaction is the same reaction I have when I open a bottle of wine and have a dry aged piece of steak. <laughs> <laughs> the wine might be better though. The wine might be better for you. At least it's like it gives you a little bit of an extra. Hey, makes you feel good. Um, in fact, I just I was drinking uh, Johnny Walker. This is what I was drinking for the night. Sometimes, if you watch kitchen party, then you know we drink on the show. Johnny Walker, Platinum Label, 
and it's oh. delicious by the way i wish i had some lard because i'd be like hey i would i should have made some cookies with some lard today that's what i should have done you wouldn't though would you and i would would you you would eat cookies? you know i it's funny because for those of you who watch know i'm a vegetarian <laughs> the thing is is i do like eggs and stuff and baked goods i there you go i i don't know why you can't say the yolk you're okay yeah, I just have this weird thing where if it's a cupcake and it tastes sweet, I'm like, eh. well, if you were, what can I do? When you were eating Twinkies when you were a kid, I, I, know. I don't think you were right? you were vegetarian then, maybe, <laughs> but you were eating beef fat in your Twinkies. Yes, I cannot believe that. Actually, it's like those were my those things and ding dongs. I love those things, and but Twinkies were like my 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 jam, my 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 whatever, my pajama jam. There's, those things were, they were, I don't know what it was about those things. I don't know how, I probably could have had a Twinkie like 35 years ago, 40 years ago, and it would still be fresh today. How do they do that, by the way? How do they keep it, do they add more stuff to it? Because if that has like natural fat in it, what's the rest of the stuff that keeps it from not going bad? The partially dehydrated? Uh, honestly, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they put in Twinkies that make them last so long. It's probably something we can't even pronounce. That but it's, has nothing to do with the fats necessarily. I mean, it may help, but uh, yeah, that, that's the old joke, right? Twinkies don't ever go bad, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, hopefully, because they, they they don't take too long to eat. Um, well, we have probably like three more minutes to the the show till we end. So I want to make sure that people know where to find you. We said coastpacking.com was the website. Yeah. Now, are you guys are on Facebook? As we um, mentioned, you guys on Facebook in a couple of our posts, yeah. so people can also find you there. Thank you. Um, and then also, are you guys on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that? I believe we're all on all of those. Twitter. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So it's probably coastpacking would be. Yeah, would if, do actually, if you go to our website and you all scroll down to the bottom, there's icons for each for Twitter, Instagram, uh, you know, all, all of Facebook, all the social media stuff. I have to admit, as I told you uh, earlier, Babette, before we got started, I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on any of that stuff, personally. I feel like giving you a high five for that one, because that's <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know why. I just never took to it, I guess. I, I did tell you, I sometimes troll on my wife's Facebook. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and, and I use it to get access to our our, our race team's Facebook page. Ah. So, uh, oh, it's right, because you're a racer. I forgot about that. Yeah. Now, what kind of racing do you do? What kind of car? Drag racing. So, uh, eighth mile, like quarter that? mile drag racing, straight line. <laughs> So those are the ones where like you see them where they're like Voo, and then they take off and like they just this the speed at how fast they can get right yeah the point is to go from a to b the quickest that you can per the rules that, yeah, the and then you have like little parachutes at the back we do have parachutes in the back to help slow the car down that is crazy that must be like crazy fun in it's an incredible rush <laughs> with a good time yeah it's 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 a team sport. Even though there's one driver, it's a team sport. It, it's very similar to running our business. I tend to use racing analogies a lot, and there's a lot of uh, parallels between running my company and, and running a drag racing team. It takes a team. Wow. That's, you know, my husband, I did the Mario and Freddy race car driving school for him for his birthday one year, and he went 160, like one miles. How fast? Do you go in in the vehicle? Uh, in the quarter of a mile, for, so zero to a quarter of a mile, six point eight seconds at two hundred and six miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> My husband said when when he was going in the turn, he was going so fast he couldn't tell if he was going straight or if he was turning. And he's like, that's when I realized I had to slow down. He's like. I was so confused. It was ridiculous. But he was wow. in like one of those the the cars where you're like on the outside, mm -hmm. and he said that the wind was incredibly crazy. The cars that you guys have are they regular size cars? Yeah, so oh, those, those, they're the can, long skinny ones, right? It, it, you could actually go to our Facebook page. It's R and E Racing under Facebook. Look at that. 
And the R is for my dad, Ron, and E for Eric. So it's my, oh, my, my dad and I are both the yeah. owners of the race team. We're, we're half owners each. Okay. So yeah, we have a Ford Mustang that we race currently, and it looks like a Ford Mustang, kind of. <laughs> so, like the new, but it looks like a new Ford Mustang. It doesn't look like, like the old classic. Like the Mark yeah, it's a, it's a 1989, uh, you know, okay. they call it the old Fox body style, which was very popular in the yeah. 80s and 90s. Yeah. That was like the Mustang GT, you know, everybody wanted to have in high school. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, I wanted one and uh, my parents weren't really big fans of me having a fast car. So I drove an 84 Cadillac. <laughs> it was my grandfather's hey, car. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh. Hey, those are cool now. Those are cool now. We have two 73 oh, Cadillacs. Geez that we have in storage. And my husband remembers the day his father brought that car home. He was trying to, when they sold their family house, he was trying to, to move that car somewhere else. He stores it in a place that when he found another car that fit the exact same model and everything, he realized he could buy it for parts. So now he stores two of those cars, plus a, um, a Super B. Very we cool. have a Ford Falcon, nice. which is 1965. We used to have a 78 uh, Fiat Spider, which was my car, which I love. Um, and now we have a little bit more of a traditional car. Um, but yeah, no, we drive around in the Falcon and people are always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're so, um, they're so happy to like, it's funny. I'll like drive behind him in like my regular, like Toyota. Beep, 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 and he'll be like, oh, all the people will give him the high fives. All the men will be like, yeah, dude, you're awesome. <laughs> It's just, it makes me laugh. It makes, I love it so much. I, I like well, it. Eric, 65 Ford Falcon? 65 Ford, the that's square a, body. That's a great car. I love that yeah. car. I love, we, it, I love the 60s and 70s muscle car era. You know, I've got, no, a, you'd love the I've got a couple, couple of my own. They're a lot of fun to play with and drive. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Hey, Michael says, thank you for letting me join you. Yeah, we are wrapping up right now. Also, Monica Chase, um, she said it was Logan's 18th birthday today. So she, that's her son. So she is, she's in Alaska, by the way. Happy birthday. Um, yes, happy birthday, Logan. Um, she's in Alaska. And I remember when I first met her, I had just gone to Alaska a couple years before. And I said, oh, I went and it was beautiful and the, the blue ice and all that stuff because the, the ice is so old there, it turns blue. And she was like, you need to go to Alaska now because the ice is melting. You will not yeah. see it like before. So I, I, I've said every day that goes by, I'm always like, well, there's another day that I don't see Alaska. <laughs> But we'll we'll make that we'll make it work. Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited about sharing this video. Um, we'll we'll upload it to YouTube. We'll share it with our community. Um, it was it's cool to kind of get a little bit more of the backstory from someone who actually like works with the product as opposed to just like a commercial where they're like, here's here's what you should do with this, and you feel you know labels and packaging and everything is very seductive and so if it says like it's healthy for you it's nice to kind of get a little bit more insight on that so i really appreciate it and danielle thank you for joining us of course um, for those for of you who are watching, awesome i hey, work are you working on any blog posts anything coming up that we should be on the lookout for mm, no <laughs> um yeah i haven't i don't have any projects going on right now i'm Focusing a little bit on my um, my side job. Are you coming to Tech Munch LA? Yes. Okay. I for those of for those of you who are watching, Tech Munch is January twenty eighth. Where is it going to be? be? Los Angeles, San Francisco. Uh, no, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Los Santa Los Monica. Santa Monica. Oh. Santa Monica, uh, Santa Monica? Campus, same place. Okay. Uh, if you go to Tech and Munch then, LA, you'll be able to see the information. And then June and July, we've got cupcake camp. Maybe, maybe. Okay. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I have it on the I could question this for years. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can get some lard for that. Hey. You, know what? You, might, you might know somebody now. We can get that. I might you. know yeah. somebody. Yeah. Cupcakes. Eric, we'll be calling you shortly. Um, yes. Cool, guys. Well, I hope you have a great night home. I'm going to stop this feed. Um, if you want to, uh, in January, or uh, actually uh, in February, we're going to be starting Kitchen Party 
again, um, which is going to be really fun. We have a complete, we have some changes that we're going to be launching on the site um, at bakespace.com. We're really excited about. Um, Danielle is going to be a part of that. Renee is going to be a part of that. Maybe we can get Jeff back. Oh, that would, he's hysterical. I've been yeah. trying to get Jeff back. Mix. And um, we'll have some news for you guys. So uh, share this video uh, with your friends and family, anyone who's interested in, um, in, natural products and also uh, making sure that you have a healthy lifestyle and also making food taste better. That, that's, I think that's what we should all, we should all have five to that. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, guys, we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank Happy you holidays. Thank you so much. You too. Happy holidays.